as you can probably see, this is quite a packed room. So if there's an empty chair beside you, could you uh, move into it, please, so that we kind of get everybody all seated. If you could do that, that would be wonderful. Thank you very, very much. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, my name's Rhys. I'm going to be your MC for this room this afternoon. Uh, but you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from Nemanja. Uh, Nemanja Alexic is Product Marketing Manager at Manage WP and GoDaddy. He helps organize World, World Camp Belgrade uh, and is on a personal quest to help the WordPress community charge an honest fee for their services. Uh, here today to talk to you about building relationships and our websites, big round of applause for Nemanja Alexic. Thank you so much for coming. The mic is okay. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Fantastic. So, like most stories, this story starts with a girl. <coughs> so some 20 years ago, I went to Montenegro on a summer holiday, and I met this girl, and she was fantastic. And I fell for her right away, and we got together pretty soon. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't a long time uh, relationship, so we broke uh, broke up, but we stayed uh, good friends. Um, unfortunately for me, I was, can I say, a young idiot? <laughs> so I was really, really like into her, and she was really, really uh, young. We were both around 16. So what happened is, uh, whenever she needed a, a confidence boost, she would call me up at like 3 a.m. and I would respond right away and say, hey, what's going on, can I help? Uh, there were also like some things like when she, whenever she needed a favor, I would like get into a taxi, drive across town and like help her, whatever she needed. So at some point I realized that like she's taking advantage of me and she's a bad person and I gotta break off any contact with her. So that was my conclusion at that point. And if I had to sum it up in one sentence, that's I was doing everything I can to make her happy and getting little in return. So some of you might be asking, why did I get to this talk instead of going to Gutenberg or some other better talk? <laughs> the point is coming, so bear with me. You need a specialist, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a note of that. Um, Replace just one word in this sentence. Does this relate to your business in any sense? So a lot of times, and this is including myself because I used to run a maintenance gig on the side. A lot of times I would feel that I was bending, uh, bending over backwards. Is that the right term? Yes. Yeah. For my clients. And all I get is like cussing and like uh, criticism and like, no, no respect at all. And that's when I realized it wasn't my friend's fault, the reason why we're having a bad relationship. It was mine as well. Because I taught her that it's totally OK to call me at 4 AM. It's totally OK to ask for anything she wants. Because it's totally OK for me to give everything without asking nothing in return. And that was the reason why it was such an unhealthy relationship. And I see that happening all the time uh, when it comes to web developers. Because unlike uh, plumbing business or uh, car uh, mechanic, we don't have that much uh, experience to hand over from one uh, professional to another. There's not much structured learning when it comes uh, to a web development business. A lot of us learned from our own mistakes and learned online and well, basically learned the hard way. So why should we talk about uh, relationships in web development? Well, there are two basic reasons for it. Number one, healthy, um, sorry, healthy relationships drive growth. So we did a survey back in 2017. We asked around 1,500 uh, web developers across the world, like, what's your main growth driver? And the result was really interesting. We realized that 
39.6% uh, of our users uh, drove growth by new design and development services. So basically that meant that they already knew a client and they built a new website for them. They either uh, replacing the old website or creating a completely new business that that person owned. 31.1% came from uh, support and maintenance services for this client. So once again, this is an existing relationship. They were adding up to that relationship, taking it to the next level basically. Kind of like engagement. Uh, and only 20.6% actually came from finding new clients. So that was a real eye-opener for us because that means in total we got 70.7% of business coming from existing clients. Another big thing is that we need to realize that healthy relationships are not a one-time transaction. So what does that mean? You sit down with a client, you agree on a job, a one-time transaction would be that you just want to tick off all the boxes and get rid of the website and move to another project. That is a mistake because you're not building a relationship. There's more that you need to invest when you hand over that website. It doesn't need to just tick the boxes. You need to make sure that your client will understand what he or she is getting and will be happy with this transaction and will be happy to recommend you to their uh, friends or family or other people because we know from experience that word of mouth is the main business driver for us. So if we look at uh, relationships as something beyond the one time transaction, we get to these numbers. So I don't know how many of you know what Manage WP is. It's basically a service for people who run multiple websites for multiple clients. So on average, a managed WP user has around 20 clients at any given point. So we help them maintain these websites more efficiently. And when we ask them, how much do you charge for your service? The people who run multiple tiered uh, maintenance and care business, they gave us their top tier and the bottom tier fee. And um, are you all familiar with the term median? Cool, then I won't go into that. So uh, the median top tier fee was $135 per month. So multiply that by 20 clients and you've got a solid business going. Multiply that by 150 clients, you're doing really good. The bottom tier was $47 a month. Now, when I say maintenance and care, there's a lot of different definitions. You can set up your business any way you want. But the main point from here is that these people charge their maintenance month by month, year by year, so they have a steady recurring revenue coming in. So if we take a look at an example where we would have like, um, let's say a $500 is for each project that you do. Uh, and you do 18 projects during the year. You got this line chart of revenue where you get $500 in January, $1,500 in February, but then you get nothing in March. So it's the famous feast and famine business cycle. You stop working, you stop eating. But if we add maintenance to that line chart, it gets more interesting. So let's say that for the sake of conversation, everybody who uh, gets your website also signs up for a maintenance plan for $50 a month. We suddenly get this red line where the recurring revenue is slowly adding up. And by the time we get to December uh, 2018, we actually see a difference in the revenue. So if you just do the $500 websites, you end up with $9,000 and zero revenue in January. But if you add up maintenance to that, you get 14,500. And in January, even if you don't touch an, another new project, you get $1,400 of recurring revenue. So there is money in that. So that covers the reason why you should care about relationship. But now we're going to talk about what it actually means to be somebody in a good relationship and why you should care about both being a professional and caring about a relationship with your client. So 
Number one, and it's often overlooked, is being a professional. So does anybody here have kids? So how many of you, if you, when you choose a babysitter, go for the cheapest? Like, if you see somebody like half the price of everybody else, would you go for that person? <laughs> These are probably the people who, who have, don't have kids anymore. <laughs> so we expect from a babysitter to have some sort of standards, and uh, we need to have confidence that they will do their job. So all of you have one thing going for you. In 90-something percent of cases, your clients are approaching you and not the other way around, which means they already have an expectation that you can get the job done. So you got a good thing going for you because you don't have to persuade them from the start. You just need to justify that expectation. And what does that mean, actually, being a professional? Well, for starters, here's an example. Um, I used to have a client that I was friends with. So whenever he would call up, I would drop whatever I'm doing and fix his problems. So it was like a, he calls me up in, at 6 in the afternoon. He said, hey, if you don't mind, something's wrong with the site. Can you take a look? I say, sure. I pull out my laptop, fix the problem, all good. Next time, he will call me at 8 p.m. No problem. And then I got a call at like uh, 1 a.m. He's like, hey, what the hell is going on with the website? He's got some weird characters and Al Albanian flag all over it. So <laughs> his, face was, his website was defaced, and he was panicking, and he was calling me up in the middle of the night. Needless to say, I think I was charging around 10 to $15 a month for this service. <laughs> so yeah, getting a phone call at 1 a.m., that's probably not worth it. So it was, again, my fault that I kept answering his phone. So what I should have done is the next time he called me at 6 p.m., I'd say, OK, I will make an exception. I'll fix it right away. But next time, I will answer you within 24 hours, get it sorted within 24 hours. If he calls at 1 a.m., I'll be like, no, I'm not answering this. I'll call him at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. tomorrow in the morning and be like, OK, let's get the job done. So another important thing when it comes to professionalism is uh, over-promising and under-delivering. It's like the standard MO of everybody who's just getting started with business. It's like, can you do this? Yeah, sure, no problem. And then you realize that you have no idea what the spec is. So you go back to your client and say, hey, eh, we're going to need another $1,000 or like two more people or I'm just going to drop this work. So that's bad. It's like, if you have to choose between over-promising and under-delivering or on the other hand, under-promising and over-delivering, your clients will always be more happy with the latter option. And the one thing that was also often overlooked is contracts. If you're a professional and if you want to be treated like a professional, get a contract. And I even talked to some businesses that state that they don't want to work with anybody who doesn't have a contract because that also shows the level of commitment and professionalism that person has. Because, let's face it, if you've got two options, one, option one is like get a verbal agreement and then your client starts messing with the scope of service, they start postponing payments, and all sorts of bad things can happen. And on the other hand, you've got paper that says, you do this, you get paid. If the client tries to make any fuss, you say, hey, you agree to this. If you don't like it, my lawyer will get th this fee paid. So you're not getting out of this. So contracts are a big part of being a professional. So the next, next thing when it comes to building relationships with clients is to set expectations. So cool thing about clients is they already trust you that you know your thing. And the even cooler thing that you can do is actually in involve them in the process and help them understand that building websites is not black magic. So you sit down with them. You explain first like, what your process is. And you, most importantly, help them understand why they need their website for. So if somebody is coming up to you with an unclear idea, they just say, hey, I want to build a website. Everybody's building a website. I need a website. You need to sit down with them and first talk about what a website really means for them business. Because if you don't, if you just 
create some website and launch it, they might be disappointed. They, realize, they would realize, they would be angry at themselves, but they would also be disappointed in you because you created something that they don't need and doesn't work the way they envisioned it. So in, in a way, they will shift the blame to you. But if you sit down and help them understand what the right website looks like, they will be grateful for it and they will come back. Another big thing is walking them through the process. So like if you have the whole process nailed down, like the discovery, design, and everything, <coughs> they should understand it because they are also a part of that process. So if your client, and in most cases this happens, if your client needs to provide the copy, they need to understand why it's them that's giving it and not, not you making up lorem ipsum across all the website and then in the end launching it with like four pages of lorem ipsum text. <laughs> because your client's never gonna go and update it after the website is live. So you need to include your client in that process. And also they need to understand is what happens when they don't hold up their end of the deal. So if there's no copy, you would just say, okay, we will stop at stage five and we will not launch the website. And I will get paid either way because uh, there's a clause in my contract that says you need to pay me within three months even if you are delaying the completion of the project. So they need to understand that they are also part of this. You're in this together. That's, that's basically the definition of relationship. And number three, and this is really important if you want to talk about uh, website maintenance support. So expectations from people who don't really understand how websites work is that you get a painting, a nice pretty painting that you hold up and everybody admires you and you, they're super cool. You're not building paintings, you're building machines. A website is essentially a machine that generates money. And like every machine, you need to get it to a mechanic you need to take care how it's working. If it's not working optimally, you need to tune it up. So your clients need to understand there's some sort of support and maintenance that goes into that website. And if they're not willing to commit time, they need to commit money so it will work. Now that, that's probably the biggest challenge because a lot of people aren't getting any revenue out of their website. So if, <laughs> let's say you have an artist that just want to, wants to create some small portfolio website, like a I don't know, two pager, three pager, they don't get any money out of it. So it's not likely you will sell them a maintenance contract. And that's okay, you don't need to have everybody on the contract. But if they're building an uh, e-commerce website and they're coming up to you and saying, yeah, I want this website like, to generate $10,000 each month in sales, then it's actually a good negotiation point for you because you would say, Cool, so you expect $10,000 each month. So what happens when that website breaks, when you stop getting in that money? So how much is it worth to you to keep that website going and growing? So that's the conversation that you also have to have with your client. And with that, I'm finishing my unusually short talk. I was, I'm just hoping that you weren't that bored. And I would like to hear any questions regarding website maintenance, client communications, anything that you have in your mind, just throw it my way. My name is Nemanja Aleksic. I work for Manage WP and joined GoDaddy as part of the acquisition. And I love WordPress. Thank you very, thank you very much, Nemanja. Okay, so we have quite a lot of time for Q and A. There's uh, there's a question right at the back first, and then we'll we'll come at the front. I'm oh, sorry, we'll we'll go to the we'll get we'll get to the one at the back. Sorry. Hey, Nemanja, is that one? Hey. Really good talk. Thank you very much for sharing that. Really interesting about the perspective about relationships rather than websites. You mentioned obviously that uh, managed WP um, can help with a lot of those maintenance plans. What kind of margin would you put on? what managed WP would charge me compared to what I would charge the customer? Well, it will depend on what your business model is, what, what kind of services you sell. But essentially, what I've seen is large-scale agency using managed WP for free, and then also some other are using uh, full uh, scope of our services, which would probably come down to like, uh, let's say, uh, $1.5 per site per month, something like that. So it depends of 
on what you actually need, but you can also use it fully for free, so that's cool. Right, there's a question at the back over there. Oh, yeah. Um, I just got a question about that, that very shady, nasty world of asking new clients for upfront deposits and expectations and stuff like that. And the background to my question is, I'm in a Facebook group with 2,500 freelancers, and a lot of them do WordPress sites and stuff like that. But um, they're all horrified of the fact of asking for an upfront payment from a client. And there's another group of us that smugly say we always do that. But what's the industry standard from your 1,500 surveyed people? Well, that part wasn't covered. It was like more a general uh, approach. But I would definitely agree, agree with the latter group <laughs> because um, these people uh, run a business so they understand the concept of like giving something in exchange for something. It's the developers that are usually too mortified to ask for that money. So that, that's kind of like a wrong approach. And the best ad advice I can give it this scenario is the one I got way back in the day. Um, if you think that you're undercharging for your services, just next time you have a project, just double what you think you should be asking. Just try it. And a lot of people actually were surprised that the business owners would just say, cool, yeah. And then they would double that service. And they, that would keep on going until they get like, to an actual uh, fee that they need to charge. So asking up front is <laughs> it's not a dirty uh, word. And trying to get an honest fee for your work is also like, something that a business owner would expect. Because it goes back to what I mentioned uh, with the, uh, the babysitters. It's like, if you, <laughs> if you babysit a kid for like $1 an hour or 50 cents an hour, then nobody's going to take you seriously. <laughs> OK, is there any more questions? There's a question in front. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll jump down. Again. Um, I've been a user of uh, Managed WP uh, paid version for about the last four years, and I use it to maintain about 24 client websites. Um, I would, I think, I'm just wondering whether it might be useful for you to tell everybody here the, uh, the nitty gritty of Managed WP and the sort of um, tasks that it undertakes to make life easier. Um, Sorry, can I just repeat the question? Because uh, it may be a bit quiet at the back as well. okay. So basically, um, you just tell us all about managed WP and what it, what, it, what, it, what, it, what it achieves. Sorry, that's a really quick way of doing it. This lady at the front said it a lot more eloquently, but yeah. I did not plant this woman. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when we try to talk about managed WP and its sister service, the, the GoDaddy Pro program, uh, the easiest way is to break down your weekly routine. So a web professional usually spends uh, its, his or her day on several groups of tasks. That's building websites, managing, maintaining websites, managing clients, and Netflix. <laughs> so uh, Managed WP was actually acquired by GoDaddy with the specific uh, issue in mind, and that's managing websites more efficiently. So our service uh, helps you uh, keep your websites on one place. So you just install a worker plugin on each website and it connects to our server. So when you log in, you see like 75 plugin updates on 14 different websites. You see that two websites have uh, malware on it, one website has a vulnerable plugin, and four websites are performing uh, rather slow uh, according to page speed. So it helps you figure out what you need to do first, and it helps you do that job efficiently. It's mostly around uh, getting to your website with one click and automating a lot of your work, like backups, performance and security checks, uptime monitoring, and cloning and migration, where you can actually set up a staging environment and clone between that and Live One within like three clicks and two minutes. There's more to it, but I don't want to go into nitty gritty because it, I'm not trying to sell you manage WP. There's a sp there's a sponsor stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, to, go if you want to know. Go and have a word at the sponsor stand. Yeah. Uh, anybody else at all? This is a question at the front. 
Uh, hello, nice talk. Um, so you're saying not to undercharge, but the thing is, when, when you're starting out, you don't really know exactly what to charge. And the thing is, businesses do shop around, and like the previous persons are like 2,500 freelancers, a lot of people to shop around with. So I don't know if you have any advice on uh, determining a kind of price point when you're just starting out. That's a good question, and there's no easy answer for it. I saw some people doing some work for free, like just a few couple of sites so they can set up their portfolio. But in general, I would say if you're not certain about what kind of price you should set, you should try doubling it and seeing if it works. If it happens that everybody's turning you down, then you can scale back. But in my personal experience and for what I heard in all the conversations and Facebook groups, it's not likely that it's going to happen because if you look at an estimate for a website, um, what in the US they call a $500 website, in Serbia we call a 50 euro <laughs> website. So you can get a quote for a same website from uh, 50 euros all the way to 1,000 euros depend on, depending on who's offering it. But if you're a business and you're like choosing who you go with, if you're serious about your website, you probably go with the high end because you'll assume that more expensive means better, uh, easier process and uh, better outcome. So yeah, double whatever you think it is and see if it works. Well, the worst that's gonna happen is you lose one or two projects, and, but you're still starting out, so. Cool. Uh, there was a question over here. Oh yeah, there's a question down here. Hang on, I'll, I'll reach down. Thanks for your talk. Yeah, you yeah. kind of have to make it clear. Okay. Angry. Be angry. <laughs> Thanks for your talk. <laughs> um, you talked about contracts. Do you have a generic contract? Do you tweak it for individual clients? What do you recommend in terms of that that isn't going to cost you a fortune in legal fees? <laughs> so just to make it clear, uh, legal fees, fees aren't a dirty word, and they, the lawyers actually are worth their money. But of course, a lot of people aren't ready to, like when they're starting to pay for a contract. So down the line, I'd recommend getting somebody like a legal expert to come up with a contract. But in the meantime, there's, and I'm, I'm forgetting the exact website, but there's an open source project for the contracts. So a lot of people got together and created like a uh, generic uh, maintenance and development contract that you can get uh, from that website and you can use it. I can't remember the link right now, but I'm gonna take a look at uh, my browsing history and find it and I'm drop it, I'll drop it on Twitter so you'll be able to see if it. If I could jump in there, it's called the contract killer. Um, is, is that what is? Not exactly, but that one is good as yeah, well. Yeah, okay, okay, right, okay. So there are, there are a couple of ones. Uh, it should be very, very clear at this point that none of us are legal in any way, shape, or form, or any sort of, like, have any sort of legal background. So, uh, yeah, you're on your own with that. Um, yeah, any more questions at all? There's a question towards the back. Hang on, I'll, uh, I'll jump through, sorry. Uh, and regarding the uh, contracts and lawyers, I recommend a talk by, um, I forget his name, but he's very famous designer. Um, uh, his talk is, mm, it's a dirty word, so I'll say Mike Montanero. Mike Montanero, and F you pay me. Yeah. So it's a really great explanation why lawyers are worth their while. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, I've got a question about your client who um, you were charging only $10 a month and he was calling you at one o'clock in the morning. How do you reset that relationship to something that's more appropriate? Well, that's a tough without, one. Without upsetting them. <laughs> that's a tough one. And um, <coughs> you will upset them in at least some extent, especially if it's not one client, but 20, 30 <laughs> clients. Um, Ideally, you'd sit down with them and explain the reason. Like, the, it's not nice to say, hey, you're not paying me enough to uh, answer you at one in the morning, but a good thing would be, for starters, if you end up in that situation, you don't answer that phone, but you call them right away in the morning and, and explain. It's like, hey, I apologize, it's late. I usually turn off my mobile devices and uh, dedicate my time to my family, but 
here I am now, I'm 100% with you and I'll do anything to get this problem resolved. Because in the end, that's what they want. They don't want to talk to you at one in the end. They just want to get their problem fixed. So if you set the guidelines and the rules in probably 80% or 90% of the time, they will be happy to stick with their rules because they would expect that you would stick to them as well. I hope that helps. Any more questions? This question at the back there. Hi, thanks for the talk. It's uh, more of an advice thing. Um, I kind of run a Facebook group of 27,000 website users, and the main question is contracts and how to not upset customers and pricing. So your advice has been great, but it is a very difficult area. And I wonder whether WP Engine Act, or sorry, WP Manage will put in some links or resources to your dashboard to say, go to Contract Killer or you know, to resources that have got things that will answer these kinds of questions. You know, the, the pricing thing, for instance, it's a business 101 question. How do I price my website? Or how do I price my services? How much does my rent cost? How much is my heat light power? You know, multiply that by, say, 10, and you will have your hourly rate. So, you know, maybe you guys can work towards helping us as developers and say, here's some resources. Don't know. Um, are you a current managed WP user? Uh, yeah. So you might have seen this annual survey that we sent out, and one of the questions was, how good was our blog? Is it like worthwhile recommending or not? So unlike the rest of the service, which got stellar uh, ranks, the blog was like uh, NPS score of like minus five. So it's not horrible, horrible, but it's like most of the people are like, meh. So what we decided is we, need to, we needed to get a dedicated person involved. So we hired an editor that will be uh, rambling uh, writers, at both freelancers and users and internal writers. And we want to focus more on exactly the thing that you mentioned. So like actionable advice, like problems that you all brought up here, the problems that I mentioned, like getting all these links, getting some advice so you could actually have something as a, as a takeaway from each article. So yeah, you need that, we need that as well, and everybody will benefit from it. And we are working on it. Great, thanks. Right, is there any more questions? Speak now. We have got, we have got a couple of minutes, but uh, if not, a uh, big round of applause for Nemanja Alessic. <laughs> So you got me thinking, um, if anybody here is actually interested in sharing their story and sharing their advice that they usually learn the hard way, just reach out to me either on Twitter, on email. My email is actually nemanya at godaddy.com. It's cool when you're the only one with that name. <laughs> so if you think that it's worthwhile sharing, drop me a line and we'd be happy to feature your story somewhere. We got a couple of blogs, so we'll figure something out. Cool. cool. Thank you. Uh, right, okay.